Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, Tuesday the 16th, where the moon goes into Leo. Ooh, in the, well, we're all asleep. Well, here in the UK anyway, 3.24 in the morning. So expect a little bit more rawr in your step or in your growl or in your face. And so it begins. Okay, so we have neglected Leolinda and the Armanac. Do, 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 do. Seasonal Guide to 2024. Look at that. That's so cool. I've got to show you this diagram. Look at that. That is the, oh God, I can't get my hand out of the way. April Tide timetable for Dover, which is where the um, ferries go over to France and whatnot. And we're looking at something called spring and neap tides. I love the word neap tides. Spring tides are the most extreme tides of the month. With the highest rises and the lowest falls, they follow a couple of days after the full moon and the new moon. So we must be kind of in it now-ish. These are the best times to choose. These are the times. Maths face. These are the times to choose a low tide and go rock pooling, mud larking. What is mud larking? I want to do some mud larking. Mud larking or coastal fossil hunting. Neap tides are the least extreme with the smallest movement and they fall in between the spring tides. Okay, coolio. Spring tides are shaded in black in the chart. So there you go, look, look at that. And isn't it amazing how one, it looks like it's hallucinogenic, and two, the camera's just not liking this, the, it looks like a wave. The chart looks like a wave. So I'm very excited. Oh gosh. Oh, brilliant. Okay, good. There you go. I've told you, spring and neap tides. See, the only neap that I know is like neaps and tatties, which is what you have um, for the Scottish New Year, you know, when they bring in the haggis. And then um, I did this one year. It was brilliant. I can't remember what they call it. They bring in the haggis and then you address the haggis. And then you do a poem by Robert Brune. Robert Brune, We Temerous Beastie. You do a poem to a mouse. I don't really know why, but it's good when you're there. But they bring in the haggis and then you get neeps and tatties, which is like Swede carrot potatoes. Anyone who's Scottish, feel free to correct me. Okay, well, this can only mean one thing. It's round and there's a pearl inside. Well, it's not a pearl. It's a, a diamondy thing. There's a jewel inside. We're doing Kim Krantz, the archetypes. Yeah. There's the pearl. It's like a yin and yang whole thing situation. Okay, I knew this was coming, as the actress said to the bishop. Um, these are these are brilliant. They're always a bit weird. They're not always. They have you have to be in the right mood for it. And there's a mini set that you can get now. Woohoo! Okay, you. Ooh. Oh, oh, hello. Ooh, ooh, oh, gosh. Blue my neck. Okay. I'm declaring spiritual big jobs and I'm going to close the curtain. I know. No need to take this out into the universe. Okay. Well, that's off off centre, isn't it? Honestly, I'm losing, losing. I was going to say I'm losing the thread, but actually we have a thread. I found it. Okay, we've got the thread, the venom, and the bridge. I love that bridge card. That's interesting. Right, okay. Not that the other ones aren't, but just I'm thinking of a reading that I did the other day. Never find anything, partly because it's Roman numerals and partly because, I don't know, it's a bit complex. So I'm just looking for the thread. I'm going to try and use the index. 
I'm just very resistant. It's like when you buy white goods, isn't it? And then, you know, like a fridge or a washing machine or whatever. And, and you just, you think, I really need to read the instructions. And then I'm like, nope, not going to do that. Right, the thread. Okay. It's going to be here. Yes. 205. I recommend this completely, but it's not an easy um, kit to have. A lot of depth to it. Life is a tangle. It's this one here with the like inked stuff behind it. So much happens simultaneously and circuitously. And of course, we're in Mercury Metrograde, which is like, if it was a scribble, it would be that leaving us grappling for meaning and direction in a network of distractions yes when we connect to the energy of the thread and i tell you who talks about this is stephen king so i was watching a thing about stephen king saying he doesn't use a notebook i may have told you this before so obviously he's a prolific writer very successful doesn't use a notebook and write everything in there he says there's this little red thread and he just pulls on it and sees what's what's there keeps pulling and it's that arbitrary okay yes when we connect with the energy of the thread we strike at the deepest vein in the body our whole being responds to the tug meaning is pumped through our bloodstream our mind and spirit is shifted we remember who we are and why we're here this happens on a very profound level, but it can be a simple incident that activates it. A song, an image, a conversation, maybe about Stephen King's notebook. That did a lot for me. No matter how confusing and multi-layered our modern lives become, if we are connected to the thread, we are free. Being tethered is the only anchor our heart requires. Ooh, sorry, being tethered to the thread. Woof. You may think you have to find the thread and pull it. Imagine, though, it's already tied around you, waiting for you to follow it home. Oh, my God. Recall a moment in your life when you felt fully alive. The thread is waiting for you amid the details of that memory. I mean, that's a whole reading just in itself, just on the thread. Cripes. Let's look at the venom. I know, we've got to go there. Yep, 191. Okay, not far away. Pew, 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 pew. The venom is always lurking in the shadows in one form or another. Its toxic presence may be in our relationships, thoughts, speech, environment. Thankfully, the cycle of purification and detoxification comes so naturally that it's also built into our every exhale. We breathe out carbon dioxide and the plants return it to us as oxygen. That's so nice, isn't it? Archetypal venom is rarely remedied as easily. Oh dear. However, and it can come in potent forms and quantities that are damaging to us and the world. When the venom appears, there is a harmful, harmful substance in our psychic realm that must be identified. Perhaps your words have a sting of poison about them. Do you remember I was talking to you the other day about how I can move into bitter boredom? That's my venom at the moment. Perhaps a relationship is draining your reserves. Acknowledgement is the first step. Change is the second. The remedy will reveal itself in time and with it, forgiveness. She drops the F-bomb there at the end. The spreading of the venom is like a chain reaction. When we strike and when we strike others, it is likely we have ourselves been struck. Break the cycle. Yeah. If you want to go deeper, read A Poison Tree by William Blake. By gum. That's a, that's a heady morning for you right there. Okay, let's look at the bridge because the bridge is really nice. Mm. 
<laughs> so, let's look at a nice card. Where's the bridge? Okay. Uh, see. 133, it's under places, which would make sense. Ooh, I'm looking at the ocean. I wish we got that one. Okay, maybe 138. I've got really cheap glasses on. Okay, the bridge. Bridges are built to connect two worlds and they create flow, allowing us to travel between the realms, the ideologies, the personality. This archetype is the gesture of acceptance, of saying yes, rather than withdrawing, separating and saying no. When we cross a bridge to an unknown land, we're led magically to a new reality. We open up to otherness. Healing and communication are made possible. We're in a state of curiosity, wonder, learning. The shaman creates the bridge between the everyday world and the sacred. And this card asks us to study the connections between the seemingly disconnected parts of our life, relationships, ideologies, histories. Remember, a bridge can't be forced. It must be made with love or its structure won't withstand the inevitable weather of life. Imagine building a bridge and then building a, and imagine building a wall. Which energy is needed for the situation at hand? Which image softens and heals the heart? Lie on the floor and listen to bridge over troubled water. Notice the ease and acceptance with the melody. The feeling of rising above the muck. Go deeper. By frost. B I F O B I F R O S T. The burning rainbow bridge of Norse mythology. Pew. Enjoy your Rice Krispies, people. We've got a lot to chew on, haven't we? So we have the thread, we have the venom, we have the bridge. I would say in the thread, the venom and the light is contained. Everything is contained, the possibility for all of it. And this is a bridge between the two. This could be two sides of a relationship, two sides of your ideas. It could be the yin and the yang. One cannot operate without the other. Meditate on these three. There's not going to be a paint by numbers answer to this reading at all. But wow, I think the venom has some power as well. It's not just like we want to escape that and dismiss it. We want to bridge it. Leave me a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.